Love him or hate him, Toad has been a staple of the Super Mario Bros. series since the first game, and was included as a playable character as early as the second game. Despite earning his street cred, he never got his own game until Captain Toad, but that wasn't until 2014. Well, Toad fans the world over won't take that lying down, and a select few people decided that if Nintendo wasn't gonna do it, they will. Today, I decided we're gonna take a look at some ROM hacks based on Toad. For whatever reason. First up is a hack of a Famicom exclusive game which apparently was at one point supposed to release on the NES under the name Squashed. What we have here is a hack of the prototype of the US version of that game, now starring Toad and Toadette, and it's called Mush Mush. It looks like Mush Mush, but they're mushrooms, not mushrooms. So I've never played the original game before, but this has got to be one of the most slow paced clunky platformers I've ever played. I can totally understand why it never actually released in the US. So the game has this weird mechanic where your normal walk speed is agonizingly slow and there is a run button but it's not your typical hold button to increase speed situation. Instead it's this weird charge mechanic where holding it freezes you in place and then releasing it flings you forward quickly for a short distance. This is then used as a way to jump to higher areas or clear gaps but there's no way to just walk faster so the only way to play this game is frustratingly slow or stupidly fast and neither is ideal unless you're like a speedrunner. Like Mario you can jump on enemies to eliminate them and item boxes hold items as well. Also you can turn into a giant frog for some reason. Or more fittingly, maybe it's a toad. Anyway, all the sprites and level assets are enormous, and because of this, it's pretty impossible to see what's ahead of you, which is why running too often is a bad idea, and the game seems to have the most sporadic difficulty imaginable. Certain parts are so easy they take literally no effort, and others, like this boss, are frustratingly difficult due to the fact that they expect more precision out of the player than the controls actually allow. It's not impossible, but it is stupid. It wasn't too long until this game got the better of me. Once I got up to this part where I had to clear this giant gap by way of gradually bouncing on the enemies that pop up from this bottomless pit, I quickly started dropping lives like it was going out of style. I kept trying over and over and I just could not get the timing right. I started getting into this weird state of slight determination for the sake of the video, contrasted with a giddiness at the thought of getting a game over. Pretty safe to say I don't recommend this one. You ever not been sure whether you're playing a video game or tripping balls? Super Toad Planet is clearly a joke hack of Super Mario World. Everything's all glitched out and nonsensical. The plot apparently has something to do with Daffy Duck, Yoshi's been swapped out for a fan favorite, Pizza Steve, and the new soundtrack features exciting tracks like Megalovania and the Thomas the Tank Engine theme song. So all the levels aren't brand new either, they're altered versions of existing Super Mario World stages, but not just in the graphics department. See, as ridiculous as this hack is, there's actually some degree of cleverness to it. I realize this sounds ridiculous, but bear with me for a second. See, in many stages, there are multiple exits. Most are traps leading you to finish the stage, but not actually progress on the map. It actually gets kind of entertaining trying to figure out which exit is the correct one that you need to proceed. Like this one stage, I'm pretty sure can't be completed without hitting the secret block switch, but the only way to access the block switch stage is by taking one of the optional exits in a stage that lies before it. Don't get me wrong, this hack is, it sure is something. There's weird stuff thrown in everywhere and all the coins have been sprite swapped with Barney the Dinosaur's head. A lot of the music and sound effects have been changed to audio samples from Looney Tunes. I genuinely have no idea what's going on and apparently neither did anyone else because this hack itself has been taken down from the site it was initially posted on. I actually had to play this on my PC because as it turns out, the only way I could manage to play the game was on one of those really sketchy sites that have emulators built into them so you can play in your browser directly. I really couldn't find the hack itself any Anywhere, but maybe it's maybe it's better that way. Anyway, I got quite a few stages in, but eventually, no matter how many exits I found, I couldn't seem to figure out how to progress on the overworld and just kind of kept looping around over and over. So let me quit while I'm ahead and take this hack for what it is. Memes. When I first found this hack, I was honestly pretty excited to play it but that excitement quickly turned into a migraine once I actually booted it up. This one's called Toad's World, and it's a pretty big overhaul of Super Mario World, obviously starring Toad. It's got a whole new overworld, all original levels, new sprites, different music, as well as some new gimmicks added to the gameplay. When I first saw screenshots in the opening demo screen, I thought this was going to just use Yoshi's Island assets, but to my surprise, they don't come till later. What you get here is a brand new platforming adventure starring Toad with the controls and mechanics of Super Mario World. 
Problem is, a ton of the game is just botched. Hitboxes make absolutely no sense half the time, the level design is really basic but still manages to figure out how to be frustrating, and it's honestly tough as nails but in the worst possible way. I played for a good hour or so and only got 11 stages in. Really the only levels that have any semblance of fun in their design is the castle stages and even then, that's a stretch because they're super frustrating and have cheap enemy placement and no checkpoints before the bosses which either have invincibility frames that you can't see or just seemingly no discernible way to defeat them. Even when doing the thing the game very obviously intended for you to do. Also, apparently it must be a really common thing that people throw Kirby music into Mario ROM hacks because like one of the games I covered in my last video, this one has random Kirby music thrown in as well. I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm not complaining, Kirby music's good, but I, I don't get it. The game surprisingly does have a story. It's very short and simple, but the fact that they tried to incorporate a story at all is commendable. Now, I don't want to sit here and rag on it too much because it's clear that the person who made this one really did put some effort into it, but I think this has a long way to go before I can consider it something actually worth playing. Don't get me wrong, it's not completely terrible, but it's buggy and frustrating and totally wasn't worth the amount of time I sunk into it considering how far I actually got in it despite that. I mean, I'm not some kind of Mario prodigy, but I like to think I'm at least good at Mario and most of the deaths seemed like they were not my fault. Maybe you'd personally have a better time with it by abusing save states, but it's just not, not really a great time. Someone stole Toad's Christmas gift and it's up to him to go on a quest to get it back. And also Toadette, but that's an afterthought apparently. This is a Christmas theme hack of the original Super Mario Brothers, and it's only four stages long, but that's pretty okay. I'll admit when I first started playing it, it was super stressful because the game only starts you out with one life, and it's pretty anxiety inducing being afraid of anything that moves. It's easy to get one ups though, and like I said, it's only four stages long, so it's totally manageable. It's just a bit nerve wracking when you know you only have one life, so throwaway enemies seem like a big threat in the very beginning. Apparently this was the creator's way of padding out the game to counterbalance its short length as well as an attempt to bring its difficulty up to par with the original Super Mario Brothers. The level design is okay, nothing to really write home about, but nothing outright terrible either. All enemies have been changed to ones who appeared in Super Mario Brothers 2, and of course, at the end you save Toadette instead of Peach. Also you fight Santa's evil brother instead of Bowser, and the Hammer Bros are all elves or something. One kind of cool thing though is that the Fire Flower has been replaced with a snowball power up, which surprisingly is different from throwing fireballs. Throwing a snowball is extremely fast and has a admittedly a pretty weird arc, and the animation sometimes makes the screen glitch out, but it's still pretty neat that they added a new power-up in such a short hack. They even managed to use totally different stage assets for each level, which was surprising because I didn't expect there to be much variety. Despite this though, all the stages except for the last seem to use the same color palette, so even though the assets are different, much of the game seems to blend together anyway. Also for whatever reason, all the stages end not with a flagpole, but the stage exits from Mario 3. All in all though, this isn't a bad little hack, and it was decently fun for the the literal 7 minutes and 55 seconds that I played it. Give it a try if you like the first Super Mario game and also Toad, I guess. Uh, Toad totally gets friend zone in the end, though. This one was really awesome, and I ended up liking it a lot. I didn't play till the end because it turns out this is way meatier than I anticipated, but this is a hack, surprisingly for Super Mario World, which recreates the gameplay of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, but set on a 2D plane, and it does it shockingly well. Now I say I'm surprised that it's built on Super Mario World, only because literally none of the assets from Super Mario World are actually used, save for the overworld. Even weirder to me was the fact that not only does it pull all of its assets from Super Mario Bros. 2, but the original NES version of that game, despite the game having already been remade in Super Mario All-Stars, but I digress. Like I said, this game recreates Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, but puts a little spin on it to make sure it's not too easy. See, in the original Captain Toad, you just kinda gotta get the star. That's how you finish the stage. In typical Mario fashion, however, there's optional collectibles you have to get in order to actually 100% the game and see everything. This game is a bit different. As far as I can tell, the star can only be collected and the stage can only be beaten once everything in the stage has been collected. This proves to be often pretty difficult, usually due to the one complaint I have with this, which is respawning enemies. Like in the real Captain Toad, you can't jump, only climb, drop, and bounce. Because of this, most enemies need to be defeated by using the turnips you pull from the ground, only problem is, some enemies respawn and none of the turnips do, so you need to be very cautious of the movements you make and plan ahead. There were some stages that I got stuck on for a while, but eventually, with enough persistence, Assistance, I did pull through. I only played till somewhere in the third world, which was about 10 stages in, but apparently this hack is actually six worlds long, and as far as I can tell, features all or at least most of the different locales from Super Mario Bros. 2. Given the care and attention that clearly went into all the level and puzzle design, this one seems pretty insane to me. This is a fully realized 2D version of Captain Toad. Captain Toad is great, 
2D platformers are great, this is great. Go check it out. Well, that about does it for this one. I do want to say there were a couple Mario 64 ROM hacks that I'm sure people were expecting to see, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get them to run, be it on an emulator or original hardware. So I figured I should at least throw a little honorable mention at the end here. Would have been fun to check out an N64 version of Captain Toad. This, not, not so much. Hey, thanks for watching this Toadtastic video. If you want to see more videos, there's a couple other ones on screen right there. And if you want to see everything I upload, click the subscribe button and then also the bell icon to keep up to date. And if you want to help support the channel, I also have a Patreon right there too.